Okay, so in this video, I'll be solving example 7.4, where we'll be calculating the lift and drag for an aircraft wing. As I mentioned, there's not, not a lot of numerical complexity, right? Mostly just uh, plug and chug here. We're, we're subbing things in. But you can see it pays quite a bit to, uh, to understand these questions, how they work, how to do a force balance. All, all that good stuff is how we uh, make sure we solve these correctly, right? It says if CL is 1.0 and CD is 0 0.05 for an airfoil, then find the span required for a rectangular wing. If it has a cord of 10 meters, it needs to lift 3,560 kilonewtons at a takeoff speed of 282 kilometers per hour. And then part B, calculate the drag force uh, on this wing at takeoff. Okay, awesome. That That's a cool type of question too, right? So it's saying, okay, for this type of airfoil, we need this much lift at this speed. So how uh, long does the wing need to be? You know, a nice practical uh, application of this stuff right there, right? So... Let's look at A first. Um, we'll remind ourselves of a few definitions maybe. So if we just sort of sketch out like a generic airfoil like that, we remember the cord length was this distance like across here. So that means if we're looking down at a rectangular span that might look like that, for example, right? That C from overhead now is gonna be this distance here, that cord length. And we've called this B in our notes for wingspan, right? So we'll look at the total wingspan there if we have a nice rectangular area. And that is the value we need to calculate. So first we write down our lift force expression, right? And that was just uh, lift force equals our lift coefficient. So the non-dimensional uh, lift force, half, and then it's rho v squared a. Sometimes you see that like a little p there for plan form area. That's just this uh, area we've sketched at the right here. Looking down on the wing, it's b times c right here. Okay, so now we just sub in, right? So we can do like a quick conversion. You can do that however you like. So v is um, 282 kilometers per hour. So you can do that conversion however you like. I'll maybe show you the long way here just so we have it. I would first convert the kilometers units. So we would say like a thousand meters is going to cancel off the kilometers unit. And then I would do um, one hour on the top is 3600 seconds, 60 times 60. Right, so then if you go ahead and plug all that in, you get 78.3 uh, meters per second, which is the units we use it in. And you can see what I've done there. I've just canceled kilometers top and bottom and hours bottom and top. So you're left with units of uh, meters per second. And you know what? I mean, we usually have access to Google too. I mean, it pays to see how to do that, right? But in practice, you can also uh, quickly plug that into Google because that's what a lot of us do as well. That's uh, quick and easy way to do those conversions as well. So marching through this, we have been given CL. We've got our V now, which was also given. We're gonna need to calculate this area here. Uh, so density of air is the only remaining thing. So let's just list that out here, density of air, which again, we can look up 1.225, let's say, kilograms per meters cube. Okay, so lift force, we are also given, right? We need to lift that is our lift force. Speed given, we're even given actually the cord, right? So the planform area here, the area of the planform is gonna be B times C, where C is already given, so it's 10 meters times uh, B. Alrighty, so we're gonna sub in then for the lift force here and then rearrange. So CL half rho V squared B times C. And scroll down here, rearrange for B. B equals 2FL over CL rho C V squared. We sub in 2 times that's given in kilonewtons, right? So let's get that to newtons so that we can balance our units. Lift coefficient given as well, 1.0. Density we've got 1.225 kilograms per meters cubed. C was given, right, 10 meters. And V squared, we, what was that, 78.3 squared meters squared. Okay, a newton we remember is a kilogram meters per second squared. 
because it's a mass times acceleration. Now we can cancel all these so that kilograms cancels. We've got a meters cubed on the bottom and a meters cubed canceling it out. Oh yeah, my 78.3 was obviously meters squared per second squared. See that? I would have caught a mistake there had I made a mistake. <laughs> Turns out I just subbed in wrong. For the units, so second squared cancels second squared. Leaving us with meters, which is what we need. So it turns out the wingspan we need is 94.8 meters. Okay, we box that off, of course, so everybody knows what our answer is. And ask ourselves if that makes sense. The cord is 10 meters long, so that's a big wing to begin with. So not overly surprising that we'd need you know, 94.8 meters uh, total length. That's a big aircraft, and that's a lot of weight, 3,560 kilonewtons. All right, so that's part A. Part B, I'll just scroll up here. Calculate the drag force on the wing at takeoff. Okay, so we go down. We're given our um, drag coefficient in this case, so that will be fairly straightforward, right? So we just write our expression. It's the CD half rho V squared A. So in this case, that area is defined a little differently. We still use the plan form area for the drag on the wing based on the way this drag coefficient was given to us. So therefore, when we go in to substitute, and as I mentioned, this is generally dependent on where you get that drag coefficient from. They'll, they'll tell you how it was calculated, right? Which area to use in most cases. So don't worry yourself about that too much. So we can go ahead and plug in 0, 0, 005 was our given drag coefficient half density again 1.225 kilograms per meters cubed oh i didn't write this correctly let me fix that it's v squared right so 78.3 squared and let's get the units meters squared per second squared correct this time and the area 94.8 meters times 10 meters we use the plan form area as i mentioned so Double check our units are canceling, meters cubed on the bottom and four meters on the top. So we're left with a meter on the top. So kilogram meters per second squared, that's a Newton, excellent. And so that works out to, I'll just do it in the one step here. So we'll convert to kilonewtons all at once here. 178 kilonewtons is our drag force. So not bad considering the lift was 3,000 uh, 560 kilonewtons, right? So we'll box that off to show that's our answer. And that's uh, how we calculate the lift and drag, right? So we figured out how long the wing needs to be in that question there. And then we figured out the uh, corresponding drag force on the wing there that goes with, uh, so as I mentioned it, there's always a trade-off, right? You get the lift from the wing, which is great, but you're also inducing some drag on the aircraft as well because of the wing you know, basically uh, blocking the, the airflow now. Okay, and that's all for example 7.4.